Hi guys, this is quite possibly going to be my shortest video ever. So, you're not actually going to see a Midori in this video, but here is some Midori paper. Now, I have been wanting to turn one of um, my Midoris into like a journal type of thing. And I've seen a lot of pictures and videos of um, people using a Midori journal as more of a decorative thing rather than just something they write in but something they decorate with um, art techniques um, kind of like art journal mixed media type of thing as well and one of the um, pieces of you know the art supplies that they use are Tim Holtz distress stains and they're um, like a little bottle with a dabber top um, with the um, distress ink um, but I think it might be, um, well obviously it's, it's liquid, but it might be a bit more of an intense colour um, than you get in one of these Distress Ink um, pads which you use either for stamping, although I don't use, like using it for stamping, or you use with one of these to um, distress paper. Um, I have got quite a few of these, I've got um, maybe 18 colours um, and I love them it's very difficult to um, distress a page in a bound book it's much easier to distress loose leaf pages so using these in a bound Midori book isn't really an option for me um, I wanted to get the effect of one of those um, distress um, stain dabbers that I see in those videos um, like Sarah Jean and Courtney um, but um, I didn't want to have to buy all of you know the colours that I wanted from the new set of ink um, uh, the Distress ink stains because I do have quite a few I didn't want to have to buy basically the same colours that I've already got again in just a, in a different form in a little bottle um, because they're relatively expensive especially if you want quite a few so when I was sorting my room this weekend because I've just been um, moving everything when I've been taking my desk from my little dark corner my cold corner over there to near the window which I'll do a video on when I've finished um, when it's all neat and tidy and sorted. Um, I've been sorting as I go and I found these two um, ink watercolour, um, sorry, watercolour paint um, palettes in a box. So I, um, I got them out and I decided to test them. Um, the reason why I wanted to test them was A, they could possibly produce the same effect that um, an ink stain from the Distress Ink dabber bottles would um, produce on paper but also because I was watching a video where a girl said that she um, used a cheap ink uh, I keep saying ink, I mean watercolour paint a cheap watercolour paint palette on her pages because um, it will be kind of drier and less likely to make the page buckle um, as using a more um, sort of high quality one. I don't know how true that is because I haven't actually tested this on my Midori um, paper but I didn't really want to use my proper half pans on paper um, just as a wash because um, these are relatively expensive and I'd be using quite a lot of it just for a wash and I'd rather use this to actually produce artwork although I'm definitely not skilled in watercolour painting or any type of painting I'm not very good at traditional art but if I'm going to practice I would like to use these um, as more of a kind of painting landscapes or something like that um, rather than just producing a wash in the background of my journaling pages I've also got these tubes but I've never used watercolour tubes before so I'm just um, intending to use these cheap ones and I'm really really glad that I found them and that I tested them because it means that they're something that I've already got, something I don't have to buy again and they're nice and re-buyable um, because they're 
just cheap ones. Um, you could probably buy this one from the children's aisle of a um, craft shop, art shop. Um, so yeah, brilliant. Um, so glad I was able to find a use for something that's been sitting around my room for years and not have to buy something. So this one is the cheaper, less um, high quality of the two. It's got two um, layers of pans which is good because I didn't realise that until I was playing with them just now and that's a nice pleasant surprise. Um, they're the dry paint um, that you um, you know, you lift up with the water. The same idea as this but this um, type of paint is kind of more gooey feeling, it is more um, like the ink from the tubes, from these kind of tubes, um, solidified and hardened. Um, this is more um, like dehydrated, it's definitely a powder, if you broke it up it would break up into a powder, but it still lifts off the, um, the, the palette the same as you know, just rehydrating it would lift it up into um, colour, like this. Um, I don't know if that's a good colour to show you because that's not been showing up. Let me show you the red. The colour isn't very vibrant, um, but it shows up just enough and it will um, get more intense the more colour you put on the page, the more layers or the more um, y the less water you use and then I'm sorry if you can hear my brother talking he's got a really loud voice and then this one is the same sort of idea it's the dry powder paint and it lifts up with the um, I've just mixed orange into that one whoops um, it's just a mush mushy colour of green and orange mixed now but oh well and it's much more vibrant colour let me try a different colour to show you um, got the red here so as you can see it's much more vibrant than the other one I would say out of the two I prefer this palette but the other one contains more colours which is more useful so that I don't have to mix as many so there you go that would be really cool to use as a background on my journaling pages and these are the Midori scraps that I got when I um, I cut up a Midori notebook and I had some scraps of paper left so it's really good to test the, pa the paint on this instead of actually going straight into a Midori notebook where um, it may not have worked properly and it may have been a bit ruined. Um, I'm just going to clean my um, brush off because I want to show you what it would be like to use one colour over the whole piece of paper so I'll use blue that's a bit wet so I'll just dab up some of the paint so this is the sort of thing that I'll be doing I will literally just be washing the paint over the background and this would be the same sort of effect that I'd get if I was using one of the stains um, in the ink dabbers from Ranger um, and in theory I could produce this effect from the distress ink pads you can just um, put them on a craft mat and use water and a brush okay that's quite streaky but if I was a bit more careful I could make that not as streaky and then that could be a background for some writing um, so effectively I can produce the same effects that would be produced from um, from buying the ink stains but I've done it from something that has been sitting around my room for years and I don't want to have to pay any more money to get the same effect which is brilliant so I'm just going to use this colour and show you what happens with that one and then another colour that's not very vibrant that orange there you go and then I can write over the top of that 
or I could um, oops, I could um, do my writing first and then paint over the top of it because I use a watercolor uh, um, a waterproof pen it's this uh, uniball I micro which is my favorite pen that isn't a fountain pen there are my fountain pens this is my favorite non fountain pen and it's waterproof I don't know if you can see there waterproof so I've let this dry I did paint over it when it wasn't quite dry and it did start to turn a bit like it was um, getting the ink wet um, but now the ink has dried for about half an hour so I'm just going to see what it would be like if I painted over it and it doesn't run because it is waterproof um, waterproof ink out of the pen and uh, I will get red so that means that I can decorate over my journaling entries however I like using something that I haven't paid for since I bought it about 10 years ago and it was really cheap when I bought it because it's a children's palette so you don't need expensive um, equipment you don't need to spend much money you can just use something you've had for a while something you can steal off your kids <laughs> if they're not using it or borrow you can always give it back and I'm sure they won't notice you've been using it um, or just something that is really cheap and you don't have to keep on spending a lot of money to decorate anything in your books so there you go thank you for watching and because I didn't show you any of my Midori's actually in the video let me just show you them sitting in their new home on the shelf it's quite dark but there you go there's um, my original first Midori my second Midori um, purple DIY Dory um, plum Ray Dory tan Ray Dory Egypt Dory from Ray and my A5 DIY Dory and I've got somewhere else um, my Monique Dory um, Faye Dory and probably another one um, I've got my little field note size one as well that I used for the July challenge so I will be turning one of them into my journal soon so thank you for watching